In today's video, we're going in depth with Lightroom's tone curve. The tone curve is a great way to adjust your image's contrast and tonal range. There's a lot to get into, so let's not waste any more time. So we will be working in Lightroom Classic CC, the 8.1 version, but it doesn't really matter what version you have because the tone curve really hasn't changed much over the years. Let's start by taking a quick tour around the tone curve panel. Front and center is obviously the tone curve itself. Here we can click to add points. More on that later though. Below the curve is our channel selection. By default, it's set to RGB, which will adjust all three channels together. We can also select each individual channel to edit the tone curve for the reds, greens, and blues respectively. Below that, we have three presets, linear, medium contrast, and strong contrast, which will add points and make adjustments to the curve automatically. To the right, we can enter into parametric mode, which works in conjunction with the point mode, meaning you can make all the adjustments you want in point mode and then head into parametric mode and continue to make additional adjustments while keeping all the point adjustments you just made. We'll get into this section later. In the top left, we have the target adjustment circle, which if we click on it, we can then go over to our image and click and drag up or down to add a point along the curve and move it up or down. Just hovering over different parts of your image will show you where on the tone curve that part of the image lies. Okay, let's break down the curve itself. The horizontal axis represents our input values, basically the tonal range of our image. It starts with the darkest part of our image on the left, getting progressively lighter as we move to the right. The vertical axis represents changes we make to the tonal range, resulting in our output values, or what the image looks like after making adjustments to the tone curve. At its default, 45 degree angle, no changes are being made. Our input values are unchanged, resulting in the same output values. In its most basic sense, creating a point along the tone curve and dragging up will brighten up the image, and lowering the point will darken the image. By default, we have two points set, the black point and the white point. If you wanted to create a faded look, for instance, you can simply drag the black point up. This takes pure black and makes it gray. Similarly, we can pull the white point down to give the image a more muted look. Once again, this takes pure white and makes it light gray. Let's add some contrast to the image. We'll add a few points, and lowering the points will make the image darker, right? Well, yes and no. As you can see, when we lower the point, the entire curve responds, resulting in the right half of the tone range lifting up. So where the actual point that we're adjusting makes that specific tone range darker, it's making the lighter tones even brighter. So what we'll often do is add points to correct this. In this image, we can see this spike in our tone range. If we click on the target adjustment and hover over our sky, we can see that it's in the range of that spike. So to keep detail in the brighter parts of our image, like our sky, we can add points and then bring them down close to the 45 degree dotted line. This helps keep the darker shadows we want while maintaining detail in the highlights. Another thing to keep in mind with the tone curve is you generally want to avoid making sharp and drastic adjustments because it can result in some wonky tones. Instead, try not to add too many points and keep the adjustments smoother and more gradual. Ow. If you need to delete a point, just right click on it and choose delete control point. If you want to start over with the curve completely, you can right click and choose flatten curve or go to this drop down and select linear. Here is where subtle changes can make a big difference. Let's say we want to give our image more of a blue tone. We can head into the blue channel, bump up the blue curve and well, yeah, it's definitely more blue. However, what if instead of lifting the blue curve, we just lower the red curve? Let's take a look. Just lowering the white point on the red curve gives the image an overwhelming blue and green look. We could do the same thing with the green channel. And we can see that now we have a bluer look. But this is honestly not that interesting and doesn't look that much different than just adjusting the white balance. Instead, let's create curves that give our shadows more of a blue hue while adding in some contrast. We'll start with the red channel, creating a dip in the shadows. We also want to add a few points on the right half of the curve to flatten it out. We can then move on to the green channel. We want to create a near identical curve as we did with the reds. If we pull out more greens, it'll add red to the shadows.
Okay, now I'm just gonna head to the blue channel and pull it back the slightest amount so it's not overwhelmingly blue. You may have to go back and make tweaks to each curve to get the colors balanced just how you like it, but this is a good way to create some unique looks just using the tone curve. having a premium Skillshare membership. That means unlimited access to all the classes and communities. Classes like bringing your 3D objects into live action footage. And how to document people and places authentically. And much, much more. There's over 7 million creators already learning with Skillshare. An annual subscription is less than $10 a month. Over 25,000 classes on photography, design, business, and more. Click the link in the description to get started. Let's check out the parametric mode. Remember, this works with the point mode, so you can make adjustments in both if you'd like. We have three range sliders here, which define how the tone range will be divided between highlights, lights, darks, and shadows. For instance, here's the size of the light slider by default. If we drag the middle slider to the right, we can decrease the range size of the lights. So if we turn up the light slider and then adjust the range, we can see how it affects the image. Let's go ahead and reset the changes. Let's add contrast using the parametric sliders. I'll start by raising the highlights, lights, and darks to brighten things up. Now to add in some contrast, I'll lower the shadows. Now I'll head to the basic panel and just lower the highlights and then bump up the shadows just to brighten up his face. We can continue to tweak the range and sliders to get it looking just how we want. And then of course, we could head back into point mode and make any additional adjustments that we want. All right, that about does it with the tone curve. We recommend spending some time messing around with different types of curves to see how you can craft the exact look you want. If you want us to do a deep dive on anything else in Lightroom, let us know in the comments below. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button so more people can see this video. Subscribe if you haven't already, and we will see you next time.